What's up, y'all? Welcome to another episode of the Single Guy Channel. Today, we are going to be discussing the differences between men and women when it comes to dating. Okay, so this is going to talk a lot about the differences in the uh, the experiences and the differences in kind of you know just the way we go about things. Okay, so this is going to talk a lot about the differences between men and women. We are more similar than we are different, but it's a good thing we're different, and that's why the two sexes exist. Because if we didn't, then we wouldn't fit so perfectly together. So hopefully, we'll continue to have differences in the future and continue to complement one another. So I'm going to list all the differences that I thought would be important to note uh, for this video. I'm probably leaving some out. Maybe there's some that I skirted over that I should have talked more about, um, but this is what we're gonna do. So if, if there's any that I missed that you think are there, please put them in the comments section below. Would love to hear what you guys' experiences are. And if there are any women here too, I know some women watch my channel, would love to hear them from you as well. Okay, so let's talk about the first one. The first difference between men and women is that men are stronger than women, especially in the upper body, okay? As the bigger sex, men have a different experience kind of walking through life and the dating game. When men go outside, we are seen less as a target or we are seen less as a victim. You're probably gonna feel less nervous talking to somebody of the opposite sex for your safety. You might feel nervous emotionally. Is this girl gonna reject me? Is she gonna embarrass me? But for a woman, her safety is something that she is actively worrying about while talking to you, okay? If you're a strange guy who she doesn't know, so I, I, you know, I'll talk to women on the street all the time or at a bar or a party or whatever. If they don't know me, there's that little bit of stranger danger. For her, it's gonna be a lot more than it is for you, okay? There was one time where I got to experience something like this. I was at a, uh, <laughs> I was at a party, I was at a gay party, okay? Don't ask. I was there. And it was like 95% dudes and like the one girl that dragged me there. And these guys were like all bigger than me. They were all stronger than me. And I could see them looking at me. And if like, if one of those, one of these guys decided to have his way with me, who, what am I going to do? Fight off all of these guys? I felt kind of in, uncomfortable, you know? <laughs> it didn't make me feel good. That's how women feel all the time. All right, so if you've ever been in a situation like that, that's kind of what the difference is, you know? So strength does play a huge factor. When you're going on a date with a girl, when you're go taking her out, or when you're first talking to her, you gotta be conscious of this, okay? So I like to keep my distance a little bit uh, at the very beginning. You're making sure that they feel safe, okay? So safety is a big concern for women because they are the smaller sex, um, and if something does go down, you're gonna be able to physically overpower her, and there's not much that she can do. So I'm not saying it's gonna happen, it, almost you know, doesn't, have, doesn't really happen that much, um, but it's something that it does happen and it, it, it does concern her. So that's why she's worried about it. Another difference is agreeableness. Okay, agreeableness meaning m women are seen as more agreeable, men generally more disagreeable. Obviously, it depends on the person. You know, I've met some very disagreeable women and some very agreeable men. But I would say more often than not, women prefer to be seen as more agreeable, okay? Now, women are more kind of socially attuned. You know, they want to fit in with the group. They have a very strong sense of belonging, which is another video that I've had. If women are separated from the group, they are more at risk. And historically, that's been a very bad thing for them. So they want to be able to uh, be accepted within the group. And as a result, they will try and be more agreeable. They're gonna be nicer. They're gonna be, well, maybe nicer is not the right word, but they're gonna say things that are gonna probably not anger you quite as much. Now, this is a good thing because they can be generally kinder to people, but also some people can see them as being a little bit more fake. But you do this, there's a reason why they do it because they want to be able to be accepted within the group. So men tend to be more disagreeable. This helps them out in business. This helps them out in, uh, you know, when they're trying to achieve higher goals, but it doesn't help so much when they're trying to be accepted within a, you know, a group of people. Okay. So the disagreeableness and the agreeableness is a kind of like a playful game that most women play. You kind of see this play out at the dinner table where maybe Maybe the dad will say like a low brow or like, you know, inappropriate joke or something like that. And then the wife kind of playfully hits him, you know, it's like, like, stop that, honey. Like, that's inappropriate, you know. Um, that's the classic example of, uh, about this working out. So you need a little bit of disagreeableness to, to move towards goals and, and that sort of thing and be willing to maybe um, brush people the wrong way. But you also need the agreeableness to kind of make the group dynamic work. And, and that's why men and women uh, work so well together is because you kind of have the two sides of that. Risk taking. This kind of meshes in very nicely to the next point that I have, which is around risk taking. When a sound happens in the middle of the night and two, both of you are sleeping and you hear a sound go off in the middle of the house, who goes to check it out? It's 
always the guy. The woman is not grabbing a baseball bat and going after if there's a man in the room there to help her, okay? Men are the more risk takers. We are the more expendable sex because we're not having kids. We're not making new people. We're not keeping humanity going on, all right? Our job's pretty easy in that regard. So men are more risk takers, and it's important to recognize this because when you're looking in life, when you're looking at different things, um, there's certain occupations that are more that are you know require more risk and so those are may, more male dominated now when it comes to dating and it comes to a relationship that's why men tend to be the ones to make the first move we are more um we're more risk takers so we risk the possibility of being rejected we risk putting ourselves into maybe a troublesome situation women will do that a lot less okay if the dis if the date that they're going on if the guy that they're going with seems just a little bit sketchy or something's not right a lot of times they just won't do it okay because they don't want to take that risk the, the repercussions for them are usually a lot bigger than they are for the guy Observant. I've, one thing I've noticed with uh, men and women is that men tend to be a little less observant. Women are like, I don't know, somebody said told me three times as observant as men when it comes to conversations. I don't know if it's three times, but it's definitely, uh, definitely higher. Like women are more kind of socially attuned to the way people are interacting with them and they're very perceptive and, and they re definitely react towards it uh, a lot more than men do. Um, and so this means sometimes women will be giving you signals and you won't see them, okay? She thinks she's being super obvious that she's telling you she likes you, but you're like, why does she keep adjusting her hair when she's around me? This makes no sense. Okay, so the guy's like totally clueless about what's happening. And this happens with my clients all the time. He'll tell me, he's like, do you think this girl's actually interested in me? I'm like, yes, dude. It's so obvious, but they can't see it because, you know, a lot of times men are a little less observing when it comes to that sort of stuff. All right, differences when it comes to sex. Men and, men and women obviously have sex in different ways. The, men, the man penetrates and the woman receives. Okay, this is kind of a mirror of how things go in life in terms of like masculine and feminine energy. The masculine is very driven and it goes in a certain direction. And the woman is kind of cyclical. She comes in waves and forms and receives things. That's why we call uh, the weather mother nature because it changes. Sometimes it's very stormy. Sometimes it's gorgeous and lovely. You have no idea what's going on with it sometimes, but it changes. And it, you know, it always stays in kind of like the same area. The moon, for instance, that's also feminine because it changes with the cycles, you know? Women are very cyclical too. So the masculine and feminine kind of represent different parts, and this is a lot of times how uh, men and women interact with each other. You know, I've always said that men need to be on their path. One of the sexiest things that they can do as a guy is be moving towards a goal, you know? Especially when women look at, that's something that women really love in a guy more and more uh, as they get older, is the level of ambition he has, the things that he's striving for. Is he going towards something? And then men as they get older, they tend to like the nurturing, the caring side, the making things right in the area that you are with women a lot too. And, and also men uh, appreciate a little bit of ambition as well too, but that's, uh, I would say that's a little bit newer in recent years because more women are uh, entering the workforce, not entering the workforce, they've been in the workforce for a while. Um, more women are you know, becoming business women and uh, entrepreneurs and stuff like that. And so it's becoming a lot sexier from the guy's perspective as well too. But I would say more so women are looking for that uh, in men. And if you think about the act of sex, if you think about how it is for a guy and a girl, the woman is getting something being pushed inside of her. And although she likes it, although it feels good, it's, it's a violent act, and so she's gonna be very particular about who she does it with, and that kind of meshes nicely into another difference, which is promiscuity. When you ask men how many sexual partners they'd like to have in a given year, almost always they say that they would like to have, um, I think it's like three or four, probably higher, honestly. Um, for women, it's almost always one. The answer is almost always one. They are not looking to be promiscuous. Yes, they want to have sex, but they're not looking to have it with like a bunch of different people. You know, there are some health risks to be women being more promiscuous than men. They have more health risks than men have. Um, they have the risk of childbirth. What, why would it make sense for her to have sex with a bunch of different men, not know who the father of father is, and not have somebody to raise that kid? Evolutionarily, that would be a horrible adaptation. As a result, women are not as promiscuous seeking as men are, where we have a lot lower cost to be getting into that. So what does this mean? This means that men generally, not all the time, generally compete for sex, and women generally compete for commitment. 
You can easily see this on dating apps. How many messages does an above average girl get in a, you know, in a day when she logs on a dating app? Way more, 10 to 20, who knows how many times more it is for a woman than it is for a man. That's because at the initial stage when people are trying to get laid, the woman has kind of, can kind of pick who she wants to sleep with and the guys are competing for it. But when it comes to commitment, a lot of times women are looking for a guy to stay around and so that's why they are particular about who they sleep with because they're not looking to be as promiscuous as men are you know a guy if you gave her this gave her an average you know a girl who was like you know reasonably attractive they'd be like yeah i'd be down to have sex with her for a woman it's a little bit it's a little bit different yeah sure they might be might be down sometimes i think women with sexual liberation has, has increased but still the difference is women are more likely to be less promiscuous uh, than men are, or less likely to seek that out um, than men are. Not saying they can't be, although <laughs> that's, a lot of the women I get along with are very promiscuous, actually. <laughs> also, when it comes to the way men talk, I would say in a relationship or in you know the man, man to female dynamics, um, men like to have kind of ownership over over the over the woman. Uh, and women like to feel kind of love and affection and attention, and men like to get the sex, the ownership, and like just having them there. Um, and yeah, sure, they enjoy connection and romantic dates as well too, but not as much as the woman probably does. Like a lot of that stuff's for her. Um, the classic example of this is, like let's say the guy's just kind of watching TV and he's by himself and you know his, his girlfriend or girl he's dating or whoever sits down and wants to talk. She wants to talk about her day. She wants to talk about like what's going on. And the guy's just kind of like, oh yeah, cool. Oh yeah, cool. And he just keeps watching the TV. And then the girl's like, all right, well, he's not paying attention to me. So she goes, she gets ready. And then she's about to go out. And the guy's like, hey, where are you going? And she's like, well, I'm going out because you don't want to hang out with me. And the guy's like, oh, well, I just kind of wanted you to hang out here. <laughs> he wants her around, but he doesn't want to take the time to actually look at her and have a conversation. He just kind of wants her there. And the woman's looking for more attention. Um, and that's important. You know, when you're raising a child, there's going to be a certain energy where, um, you know, the guy has a provider in, in the mix, which can also be the woman, but more often than not, it's the guy. You have someone who's taking care of the child, who's giving him attention, who's giving him the love and affection that he needs to be, not become a serial killer. <laughs> uh, and then you also have the guy who's like providing for them, who's also, they can see the, the ambition that the, um, you know, the father is doing and be, be well provided for. Uh, so that's a pretty big difference. So yeah, there's a lot of differences between men and women. And basically it kind of comes down to like a masculine and feminine energy. So certain, I've actually seen certain dynamics where the masculine and feminine can kind of switch. What that means is that, you know, maybe the guy embodies more of the feminine traits and the woman embodies more of the masculine traits. I would say this is um, happening more and more as time goes on, um, you know, as we move uh, towards the 21st century. So for, for better or for worse, um, sometimes they're, they're switching where like the woman is becoming uh, more masculine and the guy's becoming more feminine. But I find that this dynamic where people complement each other, where they're not necessarily the same, but the differences kind of uh, mesh well together is the masculine and feminine dynamic and that makes for a great relationship that makes for a great sexual chemistry and you know it's hopefully this will be the dynamic that continues for as long as we're alive as humans um, but understanding this dynamic can really help you reduce the amount of frustration that you get when you know you're trying to trying to date women when you're trying to or if you're a woman and you're watching this and you're trying to date a guy so understanding the differences and learning to appreciate them and they are not the same for every single individual person but hopefully from this video, you're able to see how they can play out in your life um, and how to be ready for them. And rather than wishing somebody was the same as you, which for years I did, you know, for years I wished women were more like me. I wish they wanted, you know, to be more promiscuous. I wish they were, you know, wanted to do the same things that I wanted to do. And thank God they don't, because if we didn't, we probably wouldn't exist. People do so, like me. Thanks for watching, you guys. If you made it to then consider subscribing. And good luck out there. Oh,